Hi, my name is Adam the Atom, and I'm here to help you on your journey to learning about biochemistry. Let's start with the simplest form of matter, the atom. The atom is composed of two parts, the nucleus and electron shells. The nucleus is made of protons and neutrons, while the electron shells contain electrons. It's important to note that the electrons in the atom or shell are referred to as the valence electrons. It is the number of these protons, neutrons, and electrons in an atom that determine the various characteristics of chemicals, including the placement of elements on the periodic table. For example, the atomic mass of an element is determined by the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, while the atomic number is determined by the number of protons in the atom. Now that we understand the structure of an atom, we can discuss ions. However, I'm not very qualified to talk about such a topic, so I'm going to switch over to my friend Ian the Ion. Take it away, Ian! Thanks, Adam. As you've seen before, the characteristics of an element is determined by its number of protons, and neutrons, and electrons. The same goes for ions, which are chemical particles with an unequal number of protons and electrons, consequently causing a positive or negative charge. Ions are formed by a process known as ionization, which is where two atoms meet and transfer valence electrons, turning them both into ions. From this process, a cation and anion are formed. The difference between the two is that the anion is one to receive electrons and therefore acquire a negative charge, while the cation loses electrons and has a positive charge. We can apply ions to acids and bases, as acids are chemicals that release hydrogen cations, protons and electrons, in a reaction. In contrast, bases are chemicals that release hydroxide anions in a reaction. This discussion of ions and transferring electrons leads to an important question of what happens when an atom has an unpaired electron. Here to answer that question is my friend, Freddy the Freeradical. So, so I just heard I'm a free radical which are atoms, molecules, or ions that have an unpaired valence electron. This makes me a little dangerous, being highly reactive and proven destructive cells. In fact, the cellular damage caused by free radicals are linked to cancer and thera as part of the aging process. Thankfully, there are these chemicals known as antioxidants that stabilize free radicals by having a free electron to donate. Where do these antioxidants come from? Interestingly, the body produces antioxidants, such as enzymes, to fight against cellular damage as well as acquire them from a healthy diet. Vitamin C and EV in few examples. That's why it's important to eat your fruits and vegetables, kids. Another example of antioxidant will be hydrogen water, shown here neutralizing two hydroxyl free radicals into water molecules by donating an electron. Speaking of water, this newfound understanding of the composition of atoms, ions, and free radicals gives us a better understanding of the properties of water. To finish your lesson on biochemistry is bottled to the water molecule. Before we begin discussing the properties of water, I should mention that what gives water these unique characteristics is its structure. Water is a compound formed by a polar covalent bond between two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, the hydrogen having a slight positive charge and the oxygen having a slight negative charge. It's this structure that makes water so unique, its properties being solvency, cohesion, adhesion, chemical reactivity, and thermal stability. Solvency is used to describe a chemical's ability to dissolve other chemicals. Interestingly, water can dissolve such a wide variety of chemicals that is known as using for the solvent. This idea was early addressed with the discussion of acids and bases, as they release hydrogen and hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. Cohesion refers to molecules of the same substance clinging together, while adhesion refers to a substance clinging to another. Thermal stability is water's ability to stabilize the internal temperature of the body, which makes sense when considering that it makes it a 50 to 75% of our body weight. And finally, chemical reactivity is substance ability to participate in chemical reactions, ionization being one of many examples. We hope you had fun on our little journey through the world of biochemistry, but most importantly, remember to... STAY CURIOUS! Created using Powtoon.